Hey guys, it's Sam, and today we're going to talk about soft contact lens delivery procedures, and namely, we're gonna look at insertion and removal training. So uh, before we get started, I'd love for you all to comment and let me know about your most interesting insertion and removal training story below. They're always, you know, such a, a rewarding time when things work out properly, but they can also be super frustrating when, you know, you know what the patient needs to do and they're just not getting it and you want them to. So when talking about insertion and removal, and we are talking about soft lenses, so HEMA lenses, uh, silicone hydrogel. So HEMA is an umbrella term for soft lenses. It stands for hydroxyethyl methacrylate. And it was like the original soft lens. So now it's like an umbrella term, even though, you know, Oasis might not be made of HEMA, it'll be some polymer similar to that with a silicone uh, component in it, but it's still an umbrella term for soft lenses. But I digress, because that's not what we're talking about, but we are talking about soft lenses. So before you do insertion and removal training, it's very important that you tell the patient about care systems. So like explaining multi-purpose solution, or if it's a peroxide-based solution, the time to talk about that is before you get the contact lenses out. Because once you get the contact lenses out, the patient is um, going to be more attuned to that. It's going to be exciting to them. They're going to want to touch the lens, and it's just not the best time. So statistically, we only remember 25% of what we're told. And that is diminished quite a bit when um, you start interacting with other things. So, and, and just so you all know, when I, when I talk about, you know, put figures and numbers up here, they're always geared towards the NCLE examination. So I'm always purposeful with my word choices. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how um, after an hour, you really need to take a break and, and reschedule the patient for another day. I'm telling you that because I interject facts that you'll find on the test, like that would literally be the answer to something. So really pay attention to those things when I mention it. But yeah, 25% of what we hear, um, we're actually, we're only going to remember 25% of what we hear. So like this video, if you're not taking notes, you may remember a fourth of it. And that's why it's really important to like take notes and just to be tuned in and to uh, avoid distractions. So with contact lens fitting and with insertion and removal training, it'd be, you can see how easy it would be for someone to be distracted. So talk about care systems, and we'll do a separate video on that. Uh, but you want to go over all that before introducing the lenses. The next thing you want to do before you actually go over the insertion and removal training is you have to be able to tell if a lens is inverted or not. All right, so inversion. Because if you've ever put a contact lens in that was inverted, you know, inside out, um, it's not a good experience. It's painful. Um, your eye generally will not tolerate it. And you can imagine if a new wearer thinks that that's the expectation, but they're putting an inverted lens in their eye, they're not going to they're not going to do well with the whole process. So talk about lens inversion. And there's really three main ways that you can tell if a lens is inverted. The first one everyone knows about, and you're sure to see this on your test. It's called the taco test. Um, fun name, but what it is is with the palm of your hands you put the soft lens in the crease that forms at the outer edge of your palm and you close your hand. If the lens is not inverted, um, you'll get a nice bowl shape and the, the edge profile, that edge will go inward. Also notable on the taco test is the bottom of the lens will not squash on itself. It'll become a taco shape. If the lens is inside out, the edges will flare and then the um, the bottom of the lens, which is in your palm, is actually gonna squash, it's gonna compress down on itself. So that's the number one way to tell if a lens is inverted. The next way is just uh, examining the edge profile, in which case you'd set the lens on your index finger and you would look at it from eye level. And again, what you're looking for is to see that the edge is not um, turned in, that it goes outward and then it's shaped like a bowl. The third way, and one of the most objective ways, is to see the manufacturer's markings on it. Um, I, I posted on the Facebook group, which we have for this channel, um, a picture of a lens that um, Acuvue, I'm, I forget which make of Acuvue, Oasis, or you know, One Days, or 
but it has the manufacturer markings on the periphery. So if you're holding a lens and you hold it up to the light, most manufacturers will inscribe markings on the lens that you could read if the lens is not inverted. So if that's our contact lens, that's our finger holding it. I think AccuView, the one I looked at, it has a one, two, three marking on it. Um, and so you'll be able to read that properly if the lens is the correct orientation. If it was flipped inside out, those numbers will be backwards. So, and whatever the manufacturer's marking is, just make sure it's not backwards when you're able to read it. So those are the three methods. And for review, we had taco test, examining the edge profile, and then reading the manufacturer's markings. So next, we're gonna bring out the lenses. Um, so the first thing with a lens insertion outside of proper hygiene and washing hands, which we'll cover that separately, is there are two distinct methods for lens insertion. So you wanna remember that there's the two-handed method and the one-handed method. So these are your primary soft contact lens insertion methods. So with the two-handed method, um, the patient uses their dominant hand, I'm right-handed, so your dominant hand, and they're going to put the contact lens, make sure it's not inverted on their index finger, but they're gonna take their middle finger and at the lower lid margin, um, they're gonna pull down on their lower lid. They're gonna take their other hand, they're gonna reach up over their head and they're gonna grab their upper eyelid right at the lid margin. So lower lid with your middle finger, upper eyelid with your other hand middle finger, and then they're gonna place that lens directly onto the cornea. So once the, to the totality of the edge, once all of it touches the eye, it will leave the finger and, um, and go onto the eye. So after they insert the lens, they wanna slowly lower, uh, release their lower eyelid because that helps the lens to center. Next, they're gonna allow their upper eyelid to close, remove their hand, then they're gonna slowly blink so that the lens has a chance to equilibrate. Equilibration is a term used for soft, well, for lenses where it becomes um, homeostatic with the rest of the eye. It, it assumes the environments of the cornea. So for a lens to uh, behave how it would um, on the eye, it takes about 20 minutes for full equilibration. So like your doctor's not gonna wanna examine a contact lens on a new patient until it has a chance to equilibrate or, um, or to be in its final state on the eye. So again, you're gonna release the lower lid, that's gonna help with cent centration, release the upper lid, and then slowly blink, um, and the lens will you know, then be on the eye. The second method is the one-handed method. One-handed method, this is the method I choose. You know, just, just going through these notes and doing this video, I thought, oh, okay, this is what I do. But, so you're gonna do the same thing where you're gonna put the contact lens on the index finger of your dominant hand, make sure that it's not inverted. You're gonna pull down on your lower eyelid at the lid margin, but here's where the patient is instructed to look up. You're gonna place the lens on the, on the lower part of the eye, the sclera, the white, and then you're gonna slowly lower that upper, the lower lid, you're gonna allow it to go back. It's gonna help with centration, and then the patient's going to slowly blink. I will say um, it's always best to de develop a habit or a pattern. So tell your patients to do, you know, maybe it's their right eye first and then their left eye. It's not good to switch back and forth. So you always want to develop a pattern. So most people can be right eye than left eye. I suppose if you're left-handed, you may prefer left than right, but it's really just important that they develop that habit of the same pattern. So two-handed two method and the one-handed method. Um, so before, before we get to lens removal, um, it's important that you cover uh, lens movement on the eye. So a lot of the times this is missed during insertion and removal training, but it's very important. You know, we always wanna, can they get the lens in? Can they take the lenses out? But what happens when they go home and the lens decenters under their upper eyelid and they start flipping out? You know, a, a good part of training is to let them know that you, you literally can't lose a contact lens behind your eye. That's a common fear of individuals. But we know that we have the tenons capsule and the bulbar sheath and this fatty tissue behind the eye and where it's impossible for the lens to go behind the eye. 
but, but for centration purposes, it's good to put your finger on, on the lens and drag it down a little bit, show them how the lens moves. Um, and it's good to explain that if a lens gets lodged under your upper eyelid, the proper protocol is to close the eye and gently massage the lens downward. So you're gently massaging it and eventually it will um, recenter. So very important that you cover lens movement um, prior to just doing the removal part. All right, so lens removal. So with lens removal, we're going to do, um, there's the pinch method, which is the most um, popular method. And again, what you're gonna do is you're going to pull down on your lower lid. You're gonna use your index finger. You're gonna grab the, uh, the periphery of the contact lens, right? So you're gonna look up slightly, grab the periphery of the contact lens, and then you're going to drag the lens down to the sclera, the white of the eye, and then pinch it off with the thumb and index finger. So it's super important that people aren't just going right at their cornea and pinching because the last thing you want to do is damage the cornea, right? Which is a 43 diopter lens, you know, in front of the eye and it's, it's used for in the visual axis. So that's why we always want to do our, do our pinching on the sclera, right? We don't want to, we want to minimize any touching of the cornea. That's why we want to touch the, the lens periphery, pull it down and pinch it off once it's on the white of the eye, the sclera. So the next method we can do is for people with long fingernails. We don't want them pinching their eyes. So it's called the roll method. So if you've noticed that your patients um, have long fingernails, what you want to do is instruct them to look up, take the side of their index finger, and they're going to place it on the periphery of the contact lens. And as they're looking up, they're gonna roll outward in a, J, in a J motion. So this is exaggerated, but they're rolling outward in a J motion. And this will work really well. Sometimes the lens will get lodged in the sulcus, in which case you can just continue the motion and it will pop the lens out. So really the biggest exception, which you might see a question on, is for people with long fingernails, they're really going to have to use the roll method instead of the pinch method. The final method, which is used commonly for gas permeable lenses, um, is going to be called the blink technique. And that's where you would actually uh, pull at your outer canthus of your eye, so where your lids meet, and you're gonna pull outward as you blink with some force. Um, this only works for individuals with larger palpebral fissures, which is the opening between your eyelids. Typical is like 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters. So if you have a really narrow palpebral fissure, you know, that lens is just gonna, if you can imagine it's gonna touch the eyelid, it's not gonna pop out with the blink method. So people with larger palpebral fissures um, can have some success with the blink method. It's probably the least popular method for soft contact lenses. But again, you're just pulling outward on your, on your canthus and then you're blinking down and you're attempting to dislodge the lens with force in that way. Some things also to cover, I, I believe I mentioned, but um, after an hour of trying insertion and removal, that patient has to reschedule. So that is like textbook max time you want to spend with them. And then there's some other exceptions, like someone who has handling difficulties, uh, arthritis, um, or just you know some other type of disorder where they're not able to manipulate the lens, um, then it's, it is okay to have a family member sit in on the training. So if you trust them and they, and they are attentive to what you're saying and they are going to work with that family member, you know, that is an exception that you can make um, to allow that family member to do the insertion and removal, um, gauging it on, you know, the phys physician, you know, how comfortable do they feel with the situation? Um, but, but some people do have some difficulties. It, it could be MS, it could be all different types of issues where it's just difficult to, to navigate contact lens insertion and removal. Um, so another thing is you want to make sure that the patient can, can insert and remove the lenses multiple times before leaving the office. Right, so it's really best to at least do insertion twice, removal twice. You want them to have a firm grasp on what they're doing. Because again, it just, it just um, will help them to feel more comfortable when they're home by themselves and you're not like standing right over their shoulders, guiding them every step of the way. So uh, you wanna make sure that they can proficiently demonstrate this to you. Otherwise, um, you know, they may not be set up for success. And you definitely don't want the patient to leave unless they on their own 
abilities can insert and remove the lens, right? So it's never good to be like, okay, well, you couldn't get it, so go home and practice because then you're just opening up a door for all sorts of eye injuries and different issues if they're not properly trained. If this video has been helpful, please subscribe, like the video. I love getting comments. I will do my best to respond to any comment that comes across. Um, and I appreciate your time. Just uh, subscribe for some, I'm gonna be dropping some new videos relating more towards um, topics like this, like lens care solution, um, in-office lens modification, different topics that you'll encounter on your NCLE exam. So I appreciate it.